A while back I showed uh, how to use a variable and kind of restore its state into a gadget. So like with a timer, uh, I'll just use a, a value slider. So if we said that we stored one, we want to set this to one second, uh, what we can actually do is wire this into the current time and then we can wire that into itself. So what's actually happening here is um, it's receiving two values but it's on this, um, if I hold L1 you can see it's on overwrite mode which means it looks at the two values coming in and it uses whichever one is furthest away from zero and uses that for the setting. So if I have this open ready, if I play time, uh, so if we just if we just set it with um, the wire and that's it. So if this was just set using a single wire, it would be set to one and that's it, nothing will change. And even if we power this off, then it will actually be sending a zero because that's how gadgets work. If they're powered off, it will just send zeros. But if we have two wires going into the same thing, like this, if we set that to 0.5, power both of them. So since one is further, f further from zero than 0 0.5, it will use one. But then when this gets turned off, it will use 0 0.5 because that's the one furthest from zero between this signal that's actually zero and the 0.5 value. So what if they were actually the same? How would you get that? Well, you'd wire from that value, uh, from that setting into itself. So now if I turn that on, so it's set to one, but then uh, if I play time, this, this is trying to get to a higher number. So it's looking at the current value, which is one second, and then it's trying to add to it. But you can actually do this kind of thing with a node, which is normally used, I'll just put it onto no port. Uh, which is normally used to just like send values through like this. So um, if you have a lower value then it will be sending out a lower value. But then if you have this looping into itself, so if we start this at zero, have it looping into itself. Uh, right now that one is sending zero and this one is sending zero so it will just be sending zero out the other side. If you change this to 0.1 that's higher in that moment uh, this wire is sending 0 and that's wire is sending 0.1 and that one is furthest from 0 so then it, it will use that value and send it but it's also going to next time it's going to loop that around into itself again so then it will keep sending 0.1 even if this goes down to 0 so it's like just storing the highest value possible uh, or the, the value furthest from zero as possible uh, as time goes on, even if it goes down again, which is pretty awesome. So uh, this even works. So if I did that and then I used a destroyer to destroy this value slider, then on the first frame it will be receiving a one and it will be receiving a zero from the node and the highest value from that is 1, so we use 1 and send it out. On the next frame, it will still be sending out a 1, so it will be... Um, so that will be sending out a 1. This will be destroyed, so that it will just have one wire going into it, which will have a 1 signal going through it, so it will continue to send the 1. So I play, so it's, it stayed on the 1, and if we set that to a different value, it will continue to send out the 0.6. So um, something that behaves like this is when this is emitted. So if we actually change that to a number displayer, like that, and we can emit it. Yeah, so if we turn off preview, preview invisibility, we can see the emitted object again. Um, so this, this wasn't being sent any value. So when something is emitted, um, it just uses the zero that's looped through there like that. But if we wired from the outside a value slider with a value, 
and we wire that in and now play time it emitted this object and even though this isn't wired to the emitted object for a, a fraction of a second it remembered what was being going what was going through this node which was 0.5 so then in this copy it's still got that looped round and it's still storing that value so if we try that with a different value now it's 0.8 so you can use that to very easily tell each emitted object a different value to kind of store and use um, for its stuff uh, but what happens if we turn off the node then it's sending zero because it's off and then we turn it on again and then it's kind of reset itself to zero. I'd like to thank Hemlock, ScheMeDBT, XCantaloupe and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration and I'll see you in the next one.